to say this and I got to go. I love y'all. Keep supporting comedy. And I want to thank each and every one of you black guys for dating these ugly ass white chicks and taking them off our hands. Real business. My name's Ray Lepowski. I'm out of here. Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. It's Lady Blacks again. I hope y'all are doing good today. Now, let's jump right into the video. At the time of recording this video, it is Martin Luther King Day. And I thought it would be interesting to go more in depth of who Martin Luther King was, right? Now, I also want to preface this video by saying, as we all know, Martin Luther King is considered a prominent figure of the civil rights movement and put his life on the line so that people of color today could have equal rights. And, you know, I'm not going to debate that issue because I don't mind giving props where props are due. But that being said, it wasn't until my late 20s where I was starting to learn of a different side of Martin Luther King. And now that I'm in my mid 30s and I am, you know, well into my divestment, right? I really, really wish that Coretta Scott King would have divested after learning some of the things that I learned in my late 20s on forward. And um, there are some black women in this space who say that Martin Luther King did what he did because he wanted to continue to mingle with his preferences. And I actually agree. Now, one YouTuber that really got into the nitty gritty about Martin Luther King is Cindy Black. Shout out to her. She is a YouTuber. She's been on here for a few years. She is uh, one of the black women in this space that is known to have blue eyes. She's also married to an Asian man. So shout out to her. Um, and she had made this video of sort of laying out the, the, the dirt of Martin Luther King. And you can tell in the video that she was so disturbed by it. And me listening to it, I was very disturbed. So definitely look for that video that she had posted because it's really, really good. But back into today's topic. Today, it was recommended for me to listen to Steven Crowder. Now, Steven Crowder is a conservative YouTuber. He's been on here for years, just uh, trying to educate about the conservative side of the political spectrum. And as a libertarian, I definitely do follow him amongst other conservative commentators or right-leaning commentators, right? And today it was recommended that... Um, I watch a video that he made of five things that we didn't know about Martin Luther King. And knowing Stephen, <laughs> he's going to spill the tea. So I thought that it would be interesting to raw react to this content. So we're all going to be watching together. I haven't watched it yet. I thought it would be interesting to do a react to this. And, you know, just shed more light on Martin Luther King and his personal life and, you know, if it relates to why we need to divest, we'll definitely touch on that as well. I have a feeling it does just after learning the things that I learned in my late 20s, watching different videos like Sydney Black's videos and, you know, just see what we can see, right? So I'm not going to keep babbling. We're going to go ahead and pull this up and react to it. And then after we're done, we'll have some final thoughts and that'll be that. All right. Without further ado, let's get into it. All right, y'all, we're going to go ahead and start it right here because this is Steven's sort of preface to what he's going to get into. And I think that it's... um it's relevant to the things that we talk about in this space as well. So we're going to go ahead and start it right here. So let's go ahead and get right into it. He also had some pretty, I guess you could say, unsavory opinions uh, about riots that I do think need to be considered because a lot of people don't know this part. You continue to say to my brothers and sisters that this is not the way. You continue to affirm that there is another way. 
But at the same time, it is as necessary for me to be as vigorous in condemning the conditions which cause persons to feel that they must ga engage in riotous activities as it is for me to condemn riots. I agree with everything that's, that's far. Mm -hmm. I think America <coughs> must see that riots do not develop out of thin air. Certain conditions continue to exist in our society which must be condemned as vigorously as we condemn riots. But in the final analysis, a riot is the language of the unheard. Uh. What is it that America has failed to hear? It has failed to hear that the plight of the Negro poor has worsened over the last speech. few years. It has failed to hear that the promises of freedom and justice have not been met. And it has failed to hear that large segments of white society are more concerned about tranquility and the status quo. And as long as America postpones justice, we stand in the position of having these recurrences of violence and riots over and over again. See, and that's the problem. All right, so right off the bat, right? We hear the same argument from 1966 that we hear today, the hyenas say, right? So we have what? How many years ago is this, y'all? I'm going to do some quick max. So we got 76, 86, 96, 2006, 2016, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So we got 56 years ago the same argument that we have today that we that Martin Luther King was arguing back then amongst hyenas not amongst us because black women have overcome right and y'all I already know we don't have to get into the nitty-gritty about me and my racial makeup I know I'm an ally For, from time to time I'm gonna throw myself in there I throw myself in there with the good and the bad it is what it is leave me alone okay <laughs> those of y'all who are gonna come at me and say you're not fully black I know I know okay but anyways, black women, that doesn't apply to y'all, right? You have overcome. You are the most educated demographic. You are the most likely to create businesses. You and your marriages to non-black men are the most successful amongst any demographic, right? You have overcome, okay? But right off the bat, the same argument the same cries hyenas have today as Martin Luther King did in 1966. Just wanted to point that out. But let's see what Stephen has to say about it. As the open-endedness to it because, yeah. well, what is justice? Well, right now people are saying, oh, injustice is there are too many Asians at uh, Stanford. Yeah. <laughs> so let's burn down a Walgreens. Yeah. Oh, exactly. more specific you that. need to be a little more specific. And let me be clear, too, at another 1967 speech, and we'll get to the crack whores, and we'll get to the orgies, we'll get to all of that, which hey, a lot of you don't know about MLK. <laughs> Steve is so shady, but let me go ahead and talk about what he just mentioned with regards to there needs to be specifics of what you mean in terms of the violence, right? Um, and he uses his Steve's Steve's also he's he's a comedian. So if y'all don't know who he is, he's a comedian too. He does spit facts, but he also has like a comedic tone to it. So. Most of the things that you you can't take most of what he says seriously. Just try to listen for the facts. But he talks about you need to be more specific in terms of this violence, this, these riots that you say will transpire because you can't, you know, protest that there are too many Asians, for example, at Stanford and go burn a Walgreens as a result of that. So, and... I agree that, you know, the riots that occurred in lieu of things like whatever, George Floyd or whatever, right? That was not really, the, the riots were not justifiable. It is not okay for you to go into somebody's private business because of something that a cop did to a citizen. You just cannot conflate the two. 
And then also it, it is very stupid for you to wreck your own neighborhood and not wreck the supposed oppressor's neighborhood. But we already know why they can't do that. It's because they are afraid of the oppressor and they wouldn't dare go into their neighborhoods and start a riot because they already know what's what. But they already know it's okay to start riots in your own neighborhood. That's fine. Terrorize your own. Continue to terrorize your own and not build, but go off. Let's keep go- watching. Five things you don't know about MLK. Bet you didn't expect to hear MLK and crack whores. What? Today. I have a dream of not. And basically that was the theme of Sydney Black's video was like all the infidelities. Because the way that um, Martin Luther King was taught to us, he was, he was taught that he was this wholesome preacher man who put his life on the line and, you know, was a pioneer to civil rights in the United States of America. And I would say that's partially true. He, you know, when you dig into the nitty gritty, which I have a feeling we're about to, because Stephen is shady, you can already tell he's throwing shade. You know, that, that that's only partially true. And there is like a dark side of Martin Luther King that I have a feeling we're going to learn about. But let's keep watching. Crack whores at a Motel 6. Nope. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't think crack exists. He wouldn't go to Motel 6. Just, no. motel just whores in general then. <laughs> <laughs> so a 67 speech, King said, <laughs> I can't stand Urban it. riots are a special form of violence. They are not insurrections. Ah. Disagree. Good to know. Said the rioters are not seeking to seize territory to attain control of institutions which today they are, that's their stated goal, Black right, Lives yeah. Matter, they are mainly intended to shock the white community. The looting enables the most enraged and deprived, using his word here, Negro to take hold of consumer goods with the ease the white man does by using his purse. This go- I disagree as well, only because, like I just said, they don't, when they riot, they don't go riot in like, you know, for example, there was a lot of FS word that was going on in L.A., back in the day and instead of going to beverly hills and rioting they would just riot in 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 their own neighborhoods and you know why they wouldn't dare try to impact the white man's purse they wouldn't dare so i agree as well this is bs but let's keep watching goes on a lot if you look at some of his statements regarding riots and regarding violent protest yeah it's worse than I thought. I thought he kind of both sides it. He actually more often encouraged violent protesting than he discouraged it. And that is probably disappointing to a lot of people. Yeah, he's, he's making excuses for people basically ah. losing their minds. So that just makes his whole argument of this, you know, nonviolence. We're going to use Gandhi's philosophies to get what we want. Basically, what Steven Crowder is saying is that's BS. Basically, he played both sides of the coin. And that's an interesting perspective because, you know, if that that's the case, he's low-key a hypocrite, ain't right? Low-key, high-key? Let's keep watching. I get it. There was so much injustice. I have no idea how I would feel, but I probably wouldn't then. Exactly. And... Also, I don't want to take away from the fact that this was a different time and different measures needed to be taken more so back then than today. My criticism is more so of today. You know what I mean? And, you know, actually, maybe not even so. I mean, I understand that there was a lot of FS word that was going on in terms of race relations back in the 60s. But that doesn't take away from the fact that hyenas don't build. Hyenas didn't work to try to protect themselves. Hyenas didn't fight to protect their children. Hyenas still uh, were leaving their children to be raised by single mothers. You know, that, that still was the case back then as it is today. And so, yeah, even though there was ugly, more ugliness in terms of race relations back then, Hyena's behavior has not changed. So let's keep watching. Go and burn down or rob a local store yeah. owned by other black people in my community. Right. And thing? I would never justify it and say, well, it is just a... Facts. 
it's easy as a white man using his purse. Well, first yeah. of all, men and purses. This was beginning of the. I'm moment. talking hey, about hey, Europe, hey. Gerald. Hey. Ah, it's not a European <laughs> man bag, Stephen. <laughs> All right. Well, it seems that he <laughs> so doesn't clarify, or he's flip flops, because there is another interview where he specifically says that riots are against the black community. Because right. then they, the same thing that we've said before right. in 2020, it destroys their own community, yeah. and it does the opposite of what you wanted to do. And he says, you you can. Isn't that what I just said? That's that's basically what I said. And so I'm glad we're aligned here. Let's keep going. You can kill a murderer, but you can't kill murder. Well, uh, Pops stop Sprouters here, those ri the Detroit yeah. riots, which you were alive you for, that, uh, that really hurt the white man, right, in his purse. <laughs> we didn't feel it at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. But yeah, he needs to, we whenever he says stuff fray. like that, he should have yeah. combined it with what he said later in a different interview. Yeah. Is... It, it hurts the black community to do this and then say they do this because that they're because they're being oppressed oppressed exactly so not only do they not build things they tear down the things that the white man has given them because like let's keep it real like even though these are the hoods of the hoods this is what the white man has built for you and you're not maintaining or making it better or even building your own stuff, you terrorize it. You terrorize it in the name of I'm going to try to intimidate white folk. That that doesn't let that kind of like defeats the purpose if you're not doing it in their neighborhood and you're doing it in your own. And on top of that, it's the neighborhood that the white man gave you. But let's keep going. Well, what must it's be condemned just thing. as vigorously you to, you is the harming it. of your own community. That's what yeah, needs exactly. to be condemned right. just as vigorously. Think yes. of the Detroit riots. Yeah. And then they blamed what? White flight. Detroit. Exactly. Why didn't he, like, tell black folk it doesn't make sense to terrorize your own neighborhood? I'm just curious about that, to be honest with you. But let's keep going. Right. It's like, well, first off, that's not what happened. Second, you burned down your own communities in Detroit. Yeah. Black people were harmed. And you know who got the worst end of that stick was mm -hmm. black police officers. They had to go home in unmarked cars because they yep. were being picked off by snipers on rooftops. Right. There is, you cannot yep. find examples of riots, riots in the, from the 1970s. This just further, further proves everything that we say in this space. Like just this example that he makes about Detroit. Not only are you terrorizing your own neighborhood, but you're also terrorizing the, the people that look like you that are there to protect the neighborhood. And it's just a it never ending cycle amongst hyenas. And this is exactly why you have Detroit circa 2022. Shout out to Swamp Stories. Like, I'm going to have to react to more of his videos. He had made a video of, um, I guess, Detroit made the top 10 worst, dangerous, worst and most dangerous cities of 2021. And I see, I can see it. But basically, tw uh, Detroit circa 2021, 2022 is what you have as a result of what Steve was just talking about in terms of what the riots in Detroit, like you are terrorizing your own neighborhood and terrorizing your own protectors of that neighborhood. How do you expect to have a thriving community? They never expected to have a thriving community because what are hyenas? What are hyenas? Hyenas are wild animals in Africa. Let's keep going. Hyenas are animals. That's that's basically what I meant by that. <laughs> if you didn't catch the joke. Anyways, let's keep going. Onward. That were targeted specifically, let's say, against just white people, which would be racist, but yeah. at least would just make maybe sense. No, it ends up hurting people in their own mm -hmm. community, and that needs to be condemned just as vigorously. Oh, well, we don't find that writing. Maybe it's because you were too busy with number two. And we're talking about things that you may not have known about MLK. All right, number uh, two. Worked with communists. Yeah. Really? Very closely. And I don't mean that in the sort of sense where people are like, ah, pinko commie. I mean, one of his top advisors was a guy named Stanley Le This was one of the first things that I learned in my late 20s about Martin Luther King. Um, they Conservatives tend to put socialists and communists on the same 
you know, they're synony- they consider them con- synonymous terms. And I agree. I know that there are different variations on both sides, but those variations are very, very slight. Overall, they believe in they they overall those are those are two socialists, communists. The, that's the same thing. And that was one of the things, the first things that I learned about Martin Luther King. That I was just like, what are you talking about? Martin Luther King was a communist. Martin Luther King was not a communist. That, that That's an insult to Martin Luther King. Um, Yeah, this is true. And this is one of the first things that I learned um, in terms of the quote unquote ugly side of Martin Luther King that had me thinking about him and seeing him, seeing him in a different lens. But let's keep going. Listen. Okay, and uh, he was a member of the Communist Party until 1956, and he secretly gave MLK Jr. Jr. ten thousand dollars just one year after meeting him. That's and, a lot uh, of thousands. Yeah, adjusted to today's dollars, that'd be about eighty-seven thousand. Wow, mm. that's a big mm-hmm. donation. That's a lot more thousands than I thought. Seems like an odd number, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give Inflation. you eighty-seven thousand dollars. Can't you round this shit? And communism has literally failed. Historically, everywhere. But let's keep going. The 90, I have a dream. <laughs> I have a dream to have a big purse. Yes. <laughs> All you Just white, like the one, man. white devils with your Gucci's and your Michael Kors. Chalk demons everywhere I go. And your Louis Vittons, I have a dream. <laughs> And just to give you an example of a communist country, China is a communist country, I believe. Cuba is a communist country. Venezuela is a socialist, I believe, country, which we, again, socialist, communist, synonymous. And you see what they're they're fighting, Hong Kong, just to name a few. But let's keep going. So (laughs) FBI counter agent Carl Prussian, and again, this is from the biography, just to be clear. So I I know that the FBI isn't always a reliable source, but they did tap, wiretap, which I think is a horrible thing. Yeah. Yeah. However, we also have to acknowledge the facts and reality as it relates to MLK's life. You see a progression of him becoming more and more radical. Some people argue it's because of drug use. Some people argue it's just fame is corrosive to the human soul, but he wasn't the guy who a lot of people praise. Sort of like I've talked about this with Muhammad Ali. It's the flip side, where people with Muhammad Ali don't realize that Muhammad Ali, who was a draft dodger, who was a known racist, who was against right. intermarrying, against race mixing, mm-hmm. uh, later on in his life, actually moved out to the suburbs and not only supported Ronald Reagan, campaigned for white Mormon Orrin Hatch. Mm. Oh, wow. But no one talks about that with Muhammad Ali. People change. If you change the wrong way, you'll notice there's a yeah. span of Muhammad Ali's life. where he- Or it's hypocrisy. And the same thing actually happened to Malcolm X. Malcolm X used to be pro-black, black, 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 protect black women, black, black, black. And then what ended up happening? He went to Mecca. He saw the diversity in Mecca. He came back and he started singing a totally different tune of of, of diversity and inclusion. And the people that he was leading did not like that. Hence his demise. But let's keep going. Really wasn't a... All right, y'all, I'm going to go ahead and end part one right here. Stay tuned for part two. And I hope y'all enjoy this video. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see y'all on the next one. Love y'all. Bye. What is up, black people? How y'all doing? I want to let all you black women know you need to uh, get a white man in your life.